Hi guys, Mr. Holmes here, getting ready to explain to you guys how to solve a system of equation using the elimination method. In this video, we're going to talk about what the solution looks like as a point as well as what strategies I would prefer to go by solving this system of equation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Keep in mind that when you're talking about a system of linear equations, my ad, they are linear, meaning you will get lines. In this case here, we would have three lines, where each equation will represent a line. So what I want you to understand and keep in mind is that before now, you're knowing about an x, about a y-axis and an x-axis. All right, these two axes run vertical and horizontal. Well, whenever you have lines that intersect, they intersect and when they intersect, they intersect at a point, all right? That intersection is at a point. Well, nowadays, what you're learning is that they are more than just uh, a two-dimensional. It's also a three-dimensional. Here, where you can have an x-axis, you can have a y-axis, and now you have a z-axis. And all three of these axes all represent lines, and all three lines will intersect at a point, all right? So what I want you to understand is that... When you first started learning about lines and intersections, you know that there was an x, y axis. So when they intersect, they intersected at a x coordinate and a y coordinate. Now, you're learning that there's also something called a z axis. So there's also a z coordinate. So when you're dealing with a, an equation that has three variables, you're talking about three different lines. In this case here, you have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate because they all represent coordinates at a point in space, all right, in which all three lines would intersect. That's why you're looking for three different numbers. All three numbers will represent coordinates, which will represent the solution, if there's a solution. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we have two equations. Here, my first equation is x plus y plus z. I put a little larger on my z here, so you know that this is z and not the number two. All right, so x plus y plus z is equal to 24. 5x plus 3y plus z is equal to 56. And x plus y minus z is equal to zero. What I want to bring to you guys' attention, we are talking about using the elimination method. In this method, we're not trying to substitute anything out. Instead, we want to eliminate variables right now. All right? So your job is to pick any two equations. First of all, target a variable, whether it be the x variable, the y variable, or the z variable. And we want to eliminate these as soon as possible. Using, of course, addition or subtraction of equations. All right, so step one, pick a variable, any variable. And we're gonna to choose to target that variable. Step two, we're gonna add or subtract equations from each other to eliminate that variable. You wanna look for variables that have either the same coefficient with the same operation, meaning they're both positive or they're both negative, or the same coefficient with opposite operations, because this will determine whether you want to add or subtract equations. For instance, here if I choose to target x first, I will choose my first equation and my third equation because they both have a coefficient of the number one. x is not one. The number in front of the x is 1. Remember, we do not write that number, but it's assumed to be there if you do not see a number. So in this case here, if I wanted to eliminate x, I would have to subtract these two to make them cancel, altering all of my signs in my equation. However, if I choose to eliminate z, I would choose my third equation and any one of my first two equations because they all have the exact same coefficient just of opposite operations. When the operations are opposite, you add equations. Write that down. When the operations are opposite, you add the equations. When the opposite, when the coefficients are the same, you will subtract them. So let me see that again. 
if the coefficients, excuse me, are opposites of one another, you would add the equations. If the coefficient signs are the same, then you would subtract those equations. So here's what I want to do. Because it's easy, I can easily be able to tell that I have opposite operations. I like ease. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose to target the Z variable. So when I target the Z variable, I'm going to put the Z up here. That's one, because I know I'm going to have to do this twice. I'm going to eliminate the Z out of all equations. So here I have my first equation. Everything is color coded. So here I have A plus Y plus Z is equal to 24. And I have my five x plus three y plus z is equal to fifty six. I want to eliminate both of these. I want to eliminate z out of both of these equations. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to eliminate it using my third equation here x plus y minus z is equal to 0. x plus y minus z is equal to 0. So as you can tell, one of the equations we're going to use two times. When I do this here, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to add these two equations. And again, the reason I'm adding is because the variable in which I'm targeting have the same coefficient. They both have a 1, but they are opposite operations because the opposite, that's the only reason we add it. Other than that, we will subtract. So we have 1x plus 1x. This is how I get 2x. 1y plus 1y gives me 2y's. The positive z plus negative z would cancel. 24 plus 0 is equal to 24. Notice I have officially eliminated the z variable. I'm going to want to do that one more time. Because my signs are opposite, I'm going to choose to add these two equations. 5x plus 1x gives me 6x, right? 5 plus 1. Here, 3y plus 1y gives me 4y. My 2z, 1z plus negative 1z will cancel. 56 plus 0, well, that's just simply 56. Notice I have officially eliminated the z out of both of my equations. What I must do now is step 2. It's simple. But step one is what I give my students. I tell step one, pick a variable to eliminate out of all the equations. And eliminate it. Step two here, we're going to use the same two new equations that we've just obtained after eliminating one variable. Use only, only these two new equations. And you choose a variable to eliminate. So here's what I'm going to do to show you. I'm going to target, let's say, x. I want to get rid of x. So in getting rid of x here, I have my 6x plus 4y is equal to 56. Remember, you only can use the two new equations to address this problem with. And again, I want to eliminate the x variable, so I'm going to put x up here. Because that's the variable I want to eliminate, and I'm going to keep that on my mind. All right? And I'm going to use my second new equation, which is 2x plus 2y is equal to 24. And to eliminate this here, I notice I want to do x, right? But notice if I add these two or subtract these two, it does not go to 0. I need to make this to go to zero. And the only way I can make this go to zero is if they have the exact same coefficient, just opposite operation. 
So how can we do this? Well, hmm. if I can get this 2x to be a negative 6x, it can work, it can go to 0. We need to get rid of this x. So, how can I make 2 go to 0? Simple. I want to multiply everything by a number that will make this 2x, this positive 2x, become a negative 6x. That number I'm going to choose is negative 3. And again, I'm choosing negative 3 because I need this 2x to go to a negative 6x so I can cancel everything out. And you would do this every time during this stage if they do not have the exact same coefficient. But, and we want opposite operations, of course. But if not, it's okay, we can subtract. I'll put this in a box because I want you to see that this equation, we're about to get a new equation from this point. I'm getting this number because I needed this, now this coefficient to be a negative 6. Negative 3 times positive 2x gives me a negative 6x, which is what we wanted. Negative 3 times positive 2 gives me a negative 6y. And negative 3 times positive 24 gives me a negative 72. Now, again, I have boxed this equation because we will no longer use this equation once we have rewritten it from getting its product. Once you have the product, the answer you get after you multiply, box this because we will no longer let that test work. All right? And from here, we're going to go ahead and combine. Because the opposite operations, we can add these two equations. And that's the whole reason why I multiply by a negative number, is so that I can have opposite operation. 6x plus a negative 6x, well, those will cancel. 4y plus negative 6y, because these signs are opposite, you always subtract and keep the sign of the largest number. So six, 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so it's negative 2y. Here we have 56 minus 72. This gives me a negative 24. All right? Whoa. Is that right? No. 6 here. There we go. Much better, right? All right. In this case here, we have 56 minus 72. This is how I get my negative 16. 4y plus negative 6y gives me a negative 2y. Now it's time for me to go ahead and divide. Because this is multiplication, I'm going to divide everything by the coefficient of y, which in this case is negative 2. Negative 2 divides itself one time, leaving me with y is equal to. Negative 16 divided by negative 2 gives me a positive 8. So remember, I told you when three lines intersect, they intersect at a point. That point, you have an x value, a y value, and a z value. Well, the y value for that point is 8. Now we just need to find that x and z value, and we'll be good to go. The way that you would do this is, after you get the one value, one coordinate, take that coordinate, plug it into your other new equation, and you will obtain another coordinate. Here's what I mean. Here's my other new equation. I'm going to now take that 8, and I'm going to substitute it in for y in any one of my new equations. Any one of them. All right? And I'm going to get my answer. Again, it does not matter which equation you choose. I would always suggest just choose the easiest one for you. Here, I'm going to choose my first one. Here I have 2x plus 2, not y anymore. I'm, going to, I'm just rewriting this equation, by the way. 
but I'm not going to put the y, the y variable because I know the value is 8. Here, and it's still equal to 24. So I rewrote this new equation, but instead of putting y, I plugged in 8 in place for y. So this gives me 2x is equal to, I mean plus 16 is equal to 24. I need to get rid of this positive 16, so I'm going to bring it to the other side, and when I do so, it's going to go from a positive 16 to a negative 16. This is the same thing as saying subtract 16 from both sides. Alright, and this is where we get 2x is equal to, what is that, 8? And then divide everything by the coefficient of x. In this case, 2, we find out that the x value of that point is equal to 4. So for x, plug in 4. Now that we have both coordinates, we have two coordinates, we need to find one more. To find that third coordinate, simply choose any one of your original equations, substitute in the values for the two variables in which you solve for to get your third coordinate. Again, always work smarter, not harder. So because my first equation all have a coefficient of 1 and they all are positive, I'm going to choose that equation to solve for. And I'm going to work here in this box. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. x plus y plus z is equal to 24. All right? Only difference is... I know the value for x is 4. So I'm going to put 4 plus, I know the value for y. It's 8. So I'm going to plug in 8. I'm solving to find z. But together, all of it will be equal to 24. Well, 4 plus 8, this is 12. Plus z is equal to 24. To isolate the variable, I need to get rid of this positive 12. To get rid of this positive 12, I'm going to take it and bring it to the other side of the equal sign. And when I do so, it's going to go from a positive 12 now to a negative 12. This will give me z is equal to 24 minus 12, but that's 12. So my z value is indeed 12. And guys, this is how you will solve a system of equations using the elimination method. All right? Now, I'm going to ask at this time that you pause this video, jot this information down. If you have any burning questions, please feel free to bring them to your instructor for further understanding. But at the conclusion of this video, I'll show you how to check your answer to see if you are correct. All right, guys, now it is time to check your solution. Our solution in this case is 4, 8, 12, where 4 being the value for x, 8 being the value for y, and 12 being the value for z. So how do we check this? It's simple. Choose any one of these equations, any one of them. Substitute those values in and see if it's actually equal to the numbers that it says it's equal to. If it does, it checks out, then the answer is correct. If it does not, then your answer was wrong. So let's see. Because we went and used the first equation to solve it for z, let's choose another equation. Let's choose the last equation and see if it's all equal to 0 when you add the, the x and the y variable values and then subtract the z value. Let's see if it's equal to 0. Shall we? So here we go. My equation is, I'm going to rewrite this equation, x plus y minus z is equal to 0. So when I add these two values and I subtract the z value, I should get 0. If I do, then my answer is correct. So remember, the value for z, keeping everything color-coded, is 12. So I did that because my equation is blue. So let that one be blue. All right? But I know you say change one to green, but it's okay. As long as all three of them have different colors. Let's continue. So 
So for the value for x, my value for x is 4. So I'm going to now substitute. I'm going to rewrite this equation, substituting in the values for each variable. So x is 4. So for x, plug in 4. And my x is 4. My y value is 8. So here, I'm going to put plus, not y anymore, but we know the value for y. y is 8. And then the value for z. All right? My value for z is said to be 12. So for z, I'm going to plug in 12. And once we combine all these, it's supposed to equal to 0. If it does, then this is how you will determine if your answer is correct. Well, let's go ahead and combine like terms, shall we? Use a different color. Well, 4 plus 8, well, 4 plus 8 is 12, minus, bring this 12 down, and it should equal to 0. Well, it's obvious that 12 minus 12 is 0, so if you get a true statement, which we do in this case, 0 does equal 0. That checks out, and because it checks out, our solution is correct. Again, to recap what we just done, we, after we completed everything, we ended up with a solution of 4, 8, 12. To check our solution, take all of those values, substitute them into any one of these equations, any one. We just chose the third one. We could have plugged it into either one of them and gotten a true statement. So here's what I'm asking you to do. And if you get a true statement, that tells us that the our solution is correct. If you get a false statement, meaning you get some numbers equal to a different number, then that means your solution is incorrect. All right? So right now what I ask that you do is to choose another equation, any one of them. If challenge yourself, if you want the middle one, just go through the motion if you want the, if you want to just obtain an answer by choosing the first equation. But substitute these numbers in, these coordinates, and see if you get a true statement. It don't have to be 0 equals 0. You should get 24 is equal to 24, and 56 is equal to 56. All right? If you do, this is, again, how you determine if your solution is correct, guys. But this has been Mr. Holmes explaining to you guys how to solve a system of equations using the elimination method. If you know Mr. Holmes, you know what I'm about to say. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Have a blessed day.